In ancient times, even before the Twath de Danan and the Fir Bolg went to war over the green land of Ireland, the land was ruled by a powerful sorcerer's race called the Fomors. Warped and strange they were in appearance, some say dark of skin while others claim they dwelt at the bottom of the deep lakes and in the turbulent depths of the ocean's abyss. One thing is for sure though, they levied ruinous taxes and unpleasant duties upon the sons of Nemed, causing many wars until all fled the distant lands. Their mightiest was a king called Balor, Balor of the Ilvalai, son of Baranek and husband of Kethlin. Baylor of the mighty blows was his name. That name meant death. As a child, you see, he happened to spy on his father's druids enacting an eldred rite to lay a plague upon the enemies in communion with powers best left unnamed. Some of the some ur vapors of the spell entered his eye, causing it to swell to a great size and granting it the power of death. On that same day and by those same druids was prophesied his death also, but at the hands of his own grandson. For this reason he locked away his only daughter Ethnia in a strong tower to thwart the hand of fate. Balor himself was said to have been a giant of enormous size, perhaps sharing some kinship through arcane and natural means with the Nephilim of old, those swept away by the great flood. So vast was his form and eye that it took four men to lift the lid as he kept it closed with he amongst his own folk. His eye was always covered with seven cloaks to keep it cool. When it was needed, he took the cloaks off one by one. At the first, ferns began to wither. At the second, grass began to redden. At the third, wood and trees began to heat up. And at the fourth, smoke came out of the wood and trees. And the fifth, everything got hot. At the sixth and seventh, the whole land caught fire. With his eye is said to have blasted the island west of Scotland, to which this day remained bleak and completely haunted. Even it was said his gaze could turn men into stone, a power he demonstrated at the second battle of Moitura, still spoken of with fear by the people of the Kong of the County Mayo. Now Baylor held sway from his fastness on Tory Island, but he traveled abroad to work his will, and in his travels, he came across magical white cow with green spots, owned by Gibneo the smith. It could fill 20 vessels full of milk and not run dry, and its hooves were set backwards upon its legs to deceive thieves. The only thing was, the cow had a tendency to wander off, so it had to be held by a champion of Ireland each day. For this service, the smith forged two swords and gave them to the champions. Baylor knew he had to have it, but the smith and his people were fierce and not to be trifled with. More, they worked metals as none other could, so it was as well to stay on their good side. So he made his way to the shoreline nearby. As it happened on that day, a man called Cain and his brothers had business with the smith. So while they were inside, Cain was left out to guard the cow. Baylor worked a wizardry down with whispering wind, causing Cain to fall slowly asleep, then made off with the cow. Well, Cain knew the penalty, and that he would lay his head upon the anvil block and receive the axe, but he begged clemency to the right then for the wrong he had done. The smith agreed, so he took counsel with the wise men, Begor of the mountain, who speared him through the watch winds protecting Tory Island, depositing them there in the heart of Balor's power. It was a cold and desolate place, and the folk there ate meat without cooking it. But Balor, not recognizing the victim of his wiles, agreed to give Cain a place to work as a storyteller and stroker of the fires. Cain craftily held counsel with Mananon, the master of the oceans by night, and learned from him the arts needed to get into the tower where Balor's daughter was being held. So they held thrice, and from her issued three sons. Balor was filled with terrible wrath and drowned two of the babes in the ocean, but Cain managed to bring the third to a little boat he had hidden and fled with fire and storm from the boiling oceans hard at his heels. 
He delivered the child to Manon to raise, and the boy they know as Dal Duena became this time Luch, king of the Twath de Danon, and from his line was a touch of magic delivered to all the heroes of Ireland onto the Chu, Chalan, and Fion. But that was a tale yet to be told, for as Balor's power grew, so did his depredations, until the return of the Fir Bolg, and after them the Daedanon to Ireland, where Balor gave battle to Moitor and was slain by his grandson Luck, with a fiery stone shot from a sling, a stone that had fallen from the heavens above, or so it was said. In his falling he slew twenty-seven of his own men, and his head was cut off from his shoulders where it fell, burned deep in a hole in the earth, and this place is still known as Lat Nasul, or the place of the eye, which still drains into a deep hole from time to time even to this day. This area is still marked. The place where he fell is right in between Kaluni and Kurik on Shannon. Those marks are still left to prove that the fallen was slain in that spot. And that is the story of Balor the Evil Eye, the evil sorcerer of Ireland. <laughs>